Welcome back to the channel for our last episode from our French series. We are Carol and Ken and we like touring in our little red camper. In this series we've been visiting the Loire region of France. In this episode we have a problem that brings the trip to a shuddering halt. If you like France, chateaus, storms, then ride along with us and we'll tell you what happened. We had a plan, didn't we, of what we would do in this eventuality and we even made a video about it. Yeah, we always said if we fell ill in the van we should check into a hotel or an Airbnb until we felt better. At the end of the last episode I told you that the things had gone wrong and the trip had come to a sudden halt. So in this episode we'll explain what happened. In the past I've always said you don't need a toilet or a shower, but how wrong were we? So the time now is 10 to 6 in the evening. I've checked the weather forecast earlier on and we're heading towards Bourges and it showed there were thunderstorms passing through there uh, about four o'clock this afternoon so we don't know whether they've passed through and we're going to miss them but I think we're meant to be getting some more rain tonight anyway. This part of France seems very flat and there's some strange buildings here. I always love it when the light is like this against a moody sky Salisbury Plain. Yeah, yeah. Military area. No waiting on this road. Don't know what you do if you break down. Showing us a red area on the map as well. It's a firing range. So it's the things you can see you know, um, where people can observe whether things are in your target. They've got barriers that stop you coming and they're firing, I suppose. They can let us out with a way. Stormy skies ahead. There's a big downpour over there. Turning towards the storm now. Shame we haven't got a weather radar on our map. Well, it's pouring down over there for sure. According to Park for Night, there's a little park up just down here. Chickens, so it's just here, I suppose. Like the tree. Yeah. I'm not sure about this place. No. Okay, that's what I think. Like someone's farm. I don't like this place. This is too close to people's house. No, we'll go back to those parking spots we just saw. Yeah, and have a look at the map. I think. We drove back to the village, but it still doesn't seem right here. We decided to move on and get closer to the next place we're visiting. It's another 18 minutes. Okay, well it's more charge for the battery. Yeah, we need to charge. We didn't realise it, but we're in for a bit of a shock. That church has almost disappeared in the distance, isn't it? Yeah, can't see it. But is it heading towards us? Watch how the houses in the distance begin to fade out. You 
this is why you couldn't see it. Probably the heaviest rain we've ever been in. Yeah, well, I um, look at the debris coming yeah, off the trees. It's like in America and that. Yeah. And then a load of In here, look at the uh, gutters, absolutely overwhelmed at the moment. Washing in time. This is a dead end road, yeah. so just make sure how far you go when you turn round. Storm is still rumbling away out there, Bunny. Hear it. Let's see if we can open these windows with some these midgets up. Yeah. This is a bit of an experiment. Yeah. So I have some crepes, ham and cheese. Got a crepe warming up in here. So I'm just going to put a cheese. Yeah. A ham. A ham. And another cheese. Yeah, if you like. And, some... and then and see how it goes. See how it goes. Melted deliciousness. Mm. So we came a month too late, didn't we, Charlie? Yeah, it's a bit hot in middle to end of June. Yeah, too hot for us. Yeah. We're more northern blood, well, I am. You are. I quite like uh, a dry heat. Mm. I don't like it humid. No. And if I'm going to be somewhere hot, I like to be relaxing by a pool. Absolutely. <laughs> Is it ready? Sizzling. Yeah. Smells delicious. Good. That tastes yummy. Pancakes are really nice. A nice change from um, a baguette or something like that, I think. Yeah. Okay, I've been given a pudding. Got a bit of a wobble on. It's very like the custard you get in a flan, isn't it? A bit milder, I'd say. Or more like a custard slice type custard. Yeah. Yeah. Right, it's another hot day, um, so we decided we're going to move on from this place without having a look around and try and make some progress. So we're skipping Bourges and we're going to head straight to Chateau Chambord. Right, Mum? The weather's a bit different to when we arrived last night in that torrential rain. Yeah, it's hot again, isn't it? Now? Yeah, it's going to get hot and humid again. It's very appropriate for Bourges. Thunderstorm. <coughs> The truth is, we're both struggling with the heat, and me far more than Carol. Normally, we've got the cameras out and had a good walk around Borge and shown you, but we're just not in the mood to film at the moment. Yeah. Wow, that's a massive drop-off. Yeah. Go down there. It's gonna go here. It's very shady. Well, Trouble is, we need solar for power and shade for the heat. A fishing lake. Sadly, this place was a lousy choice for lunch. 
Oh, deciding against this place because there's some massive flies out there. Mm, the big biters out there. Big biters. So yeah. I guess there might be as it's by a lake. Yeah, we've just got to avoid this big hole. So, it's that one. Mm -hmm. So it's it felt really humid out there, didn't it? Yeah, you so, can tell it's going to be a storm. Yeah. If there's going to be bugs by the water, then we figured we might be better off parking up somewhere in a town where they're not likely to be. Uh, yeah, I'll have a fan, please. I nearly pressed the button on ordering two more fans yesterday. Because these are quite rare to find now, aren't they? The ones that we like. On Amazon. Yeah, yeah I found some. Yeah. I might still do it today, yeah, but they were 40 quid for two of them. Wow, they've gone up in price. Prawn and crab sandwiches, yummy. Charlie Brown's on the ham, cheese and coleslaw. Right, lunch was beautiful. Next stop, we're going to be at the Chambord Chateau. These speed humps are killers if you're not careful. wild boar in this park and deer. Uh, surprised it's not busier. I thought there'd be a lot of people parked here visiting the chateau. We're going to try and get up this hide that's in the woods to see if we can see any deer. We find by unzipping the tent that uh, if you get any problems with flies or anything in the van it's really good if you unzip the tent because that gives a light at the top of the van and they all shoot up there which makes them quite easy to catch and get rid of. We always drop the internal curtain whenever we leave the van so nobody can peer in the back. Okay, okie dokie, go on Chutney, let's see if we get up the hide. I wonder if it is a hide. On the map. It's very big, isn't it? Looks like there's just a couple of other people here. Well, he's certainly got a bigger camera than I've got. You get a brilliant view up here, but you have to come on the right day, I think because we can't see anything except the deer and the boar on the wall. We stayed up here for quite a while, but we never did see anything. I think we were there too early. Yeah, come back at dusk. Come back at dusk. We never did manage to go back there at dusk because we had our evening meal that night and that was the beginning of all our troubles. I see why they call it the fairy tale chateau, aren't it? The skyline is meant to resemble the um, skyline of Constantinople, right. the roof line. unusual for us we're actually paying for a car park tonight and that's because we're going to be looking around the chateau tomorrow so that's all included in the parking fee fish and prawns delicious 
I strongly advise you don't eat this, Ken. You might live to regret it, even if it was served with some yummy vegetables and a creamy sauce. That's yummy. I said that food tasted off from the first mouthful I took. Yeah, I don't no, I didn't taste anything wrong with mine at all. And mm. I cooked them both the same. So whether you had a dodgy bit or it could have been a prawn, but it was the fish. Prawn. I tasted the fish and it didn't taste that pleasant to me, but I put it down to the fact that it was lemon. It had a lemon. Yeah, because you're not a big fan of lemon no. flavoured fish, are you? So no. maybe you just didn't like the taste of it. Yeah. After dinner, we went for an evening stroll to see if the chateau was illuminated, but I think we were a bit too early for that. Come on, frog, make the noise. <laughs> I think one of the problems as well was our fridge was not set cold enough for the weather, was it? No, because we were having a problem because of the um, hot weather. We were parking in the shade, yeah. so the solar panels weren't working. So we weren't able to recharge the battery, so we couldn't have the fridge on too high. Yeah. And at one point towards the end of the trip, we were turning the fridge off. Yeah, overnight we were turning yeah. the fridge off. Big, big, big mistake, I think, mm, that, wasn't it? Definitely. Yeah, I felt perfectly fine, so I decided to go off and explore the chateau on my own. So this is what I saw. The Chateau de Chambord in the Centre of Val de Loire region of France is one of the most recognisable chateaux in the world. It was built by King Francis I between 1519 and 1547 to serve as a hunting lodge. The centrepiece of the chateau is the spectacular double spiral staircase climbing three floors. The two spirals intertwine without ever meeting and are said to have been designed by Leonardo da Vinci. The roof, with its non-symmetrical towers and chimneys, is said to look like the spires of a city. It is the largest chateau in the Loire Valley, with 440 rooms, 282 fireplaces and 84 staircases. Due to its massive size, the chateau was impractical to heat and the only source of food was game. As a result, the chateau was completely unfurnished and all furniture and food had to be brought in for each visit, a major logistical exercise. These are the royal apartments of Francis I from the 16th century. After Francis died of a heart attack in 1547, the chateau was not used for almost a century. This is the chapel, the largest room in the castle. Construction began during the reign of Francis I, but wasn't completed till a century and a half later, during the reign of Louis XIV. I stayed in the van and it just felt worse and worse and worse. And I started to retch and I got the bin ready, got everything ready for being sick, mm. but I just couldn't be sick nothing was coming up and it was so embarrassing because we were parked in amongst all those other camper vans and people were walking backwards and forwards and because it was so hot I had the door open and the windows open and all they could hear these people was me retching into a bucket and I just didn't want anybody to come over to me and ask me if I was all right anyway by the time you got back I had had enough, hadn't I? And I called. I wanted to go home. Yeah, and you were feeling so ill that you, we couldn't have gone on anywhere else no. to do anything. No. And you were worried about being sick in the van, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Um, I was wiped out, really. So we then made a beeline for home, didn't we? Decided I, then yeah. and then. I still hadn't been sick by this point, had no. I? No. So we planned the route and it was going to take... Um, till seven o'clock 
yeah. in the evenings, about seven or eight hours to drive to the Channel Tunnel. So we decided we'd just make a beeline for it. Yeah, I couldn't drive at all. And uh, you drove it all, didn't you? In, yeah. Well, basically two goes, wasn't it? I think we only stopped once. Yeah. Uh, and then it just got progressively worse, didn't it? I was in the front with my bucket, our little bin. A waste bin. Waste yeah. bin. And um, I don't know how, how long after we'd started driving, but that's when I started throwing up. Yeah, yeah. And I was just throwing up and throwing up and throwing up. And it was delightful, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, not the best experience. Uh, you know, yeah. it, the smell, it, it was just awful. I was just concentrating on driving and getting there as quick as I could. We had a plan, didn't we, of what we would do in this eventuality, and we even made a video about it. Yeah, we always said if we f fell ill in the van, we should check into a hotel or an Airbnb until we felt better. Yeah, and that plan spectacularly failed, because when you're feeling so ill, you just don't have the energy to start looking for somewhere or want the hassle of trying to get into a hotel whilst you're throwing up because I don't think they'd let you stay. No. The other problem was that it started coming out both ends, didn't it? And, you know... Without you just, being too graphic. Without being too graphic. It, it was just an awful, you know, I had to change my clothes. Um, I was still being sick and... There was, I can tell you now, there is no way I think you could walk into a hotel and try and check in. No. And also, I wouldn't want to inflict that on an Airbnb. No. And what would you do with all these dirty clothes? Well, you, a hotel room would definitely fail, wouldn't it? No. Because you've got nowhere to wash your clothes. Yeah. Or, you know, you wouldn't feel comfortable washing them in someone else's washing machine. No. And you can't store them in the van for the rest of your trip. No, it's just so overwhelming. It's, so, yeah. you know, you know, we were right, mm. to, I think, to head for home. Mm. And that is why that day is uh, completely and utterly changed our thoughts on having a toilet and a shower mm. in the van. Yes. Now, we'll say this is the only time it's happened to us in four years of camping. Yeah. So I don't want to over egg this mm. but I think if we had the benefit of the shower and the toilet a I could have dealt with the you know the symptoms more easily mm. and b I could have had a good wash and a shower and we could have rinsed out clothes and yes. stuff couldn't yeah. we yeah uh, and that trip may have been able to continue yeah so in the end we arrived at the channel tunnel i think it was about nine o'clock mm. in the evening wasn't it because we'd stopped on the way yeah. for me to have some lunch yeah uh, i was amazed you could eat while i was in that condition yeah, but i was you hungry you didn't seem to have any problem well, i hadn't had any breakfast no. so i was pretty hungry by then when we decided we were going to go home through the channel tunnel we didn't know how long it was going to take us to get there so we couldn't book for a specific train no so for the first time we booked a flexi ticket mm. which was about twice the price yeah. of a normal ticket but it meant we could just turn up and go at any time yeah and you know we wouldn't do that normally but that was worth its weight in gold because when we actually reached the tunnel the whole area was in chaos wasn't it something had gone wrong with the trains and the terminal was jam-packed and when we went through to board it, with a flexi ticket you go into the flexi lane mm. and everything was a mass of traffic wasn't it yeah, yeah. and um, we thought that we there was no way we were going to get on the next train mm. and then lo and behold what happened they just come and call you forward from your lane. The flexi yeah. lane always goes on first. Yeah, no so, matter. No matter what. So yeah. we were very lucky. We just went yeah. on the next train. We didn't have long to wait at all. To be honest with you, that was money well spent. Yeah. Because I just yeah. wanted to get back. Yeah. And then the next part of the story is, luckily for us, as, our van fell through, didn't as it? As it turned out, yes. We got to the deadline that we'd agreed with Bilbo's. 
beginning of October. Yeah. There was no sign of our van having even been built. Yeah, by VW, yeah. So um, they agreed that they gave us back our deposit. And yes. That was the end of that. Yeah. I think it's fate, really. You know, mm. it, it took this illness to make me change my mind on the toilet. Yeah, yeah. And the shower in the van. Mm. Um, and then, luckily... One of our viewers suggested Consort, didn't they? Yes. I hadn't heard of Consort Motorhomes until um, Chris Wilcox, it was, who suggested yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, thanks to Chris, because yeah. that made a huge difference. So we gave them a ring on the off chance the following day, and Scott, the owner of Consort, mm. said he thought he could get us up and running in a van in two to three months didn't yeah, he yeah which was amazing yeah seeing we'd waited so long for the vw and the rest is history because you've seen it in the videos that have mm. gone before mm. thanks for watching we hope you've enjoyed this series in france yeah with no idea where the next series is going to be it could be in little red or it could be in our new camper van if you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and share us with your friends. And we'll see you in the next one.